I saw an advertisement for sugar-free 7-Up and I got very excited. This is not a sponsored video, but a real piece of chemistry. 7-Up was originally named 7-Up because it contained lithium. It doesn't contain lithium anymore. And nine years ago, Brady, Neil and I did some experiments putting metallic lithium into 7-Up. And we got a really surprising result that when you added metallic lithium, it went first green, then red, and eventually brown. And we did a whole series of experiments that you can see on our video, which indicated that it was probably the alkali from the lithium, when it reacts with water, that was reacting with sugar in the 7-Up. But we didn't do an experiment to prove it. So suddenly I saw an advertisement for 7-Up Zero Sugar and I realised we could do a comparison. Lithium in normal 7-Up, lithium in 7-Up Zero Sugar. So I went to the supermarket and with my own money bought two big bottles of 7-Up how much, that, how much does that cost you, Professor? I think four pounds. Wow, gosh. So, you see, I'm treating you all. So we decided, because our supply of lithium is getting a bit old, it's got a really nice white crust, probably reacting with oxygen and water to give hydroxide and oxide. And we decided we should do a control experiment to see if we got the same result. We put a piece of this lithium into conventional 7-Up and it reacted a bit slowly. partly because the reaction is temperature dependent and it's winter here in Nottingham and the solution was a bit cold. That's a nice shot. And it went a nice red colour. Do you think that's sort of um, red, do you think? I, I thought it looked kind of orange. Yes, I suppose so. Reddish orange. Our hypothesis, that is our idea, is that this colour comes from the reaction of lithium or the alkali from lithium with sugar. What do you mean the alkali from lithium? Well, lithium reacts with water to form lithium hydroxide, which is an alkali. And then that alkali reacts it's with sugar. I think almost certainly it's some sort of polymer that sugar molecules join together. And it may not be a very well-defined product. And it may even be that the red colour is a tiny byproduct. If most of the products are colourless and just one of them is red-orange, that's the only one you'll see, unless you do a very careful analysis which we don't have the patience to do. So our hypothesis is that if we took zero sugar 7-Up, put in the lithium, it would react. You'd see bubbles and things, but it would remain colourless. So Neil did the experiment. I'm not trusted with metallic lithium. And it reacted nicely, plenty of bubbles. You have to remember that some of the bubbles as the carbon dioxide coming out of the drink. And we didn't test whether the zero seven up was carbonated to the same level as the other one. Maybe that people don't like the zero sugar, so it stays longer on the supermarket shelf and the CO2 leaks out. Or it may just be that 
it didn't have as much CO2 to begin with. So we tried the experiment and from my point of view it was a complete success because the solution stayed essentially colourless. There was a bit of argument because you know Neil and Brady always want to prove me wrong. They thought it might have had a slight green tinge but I think they were just winding me up. Yeah. So I was very pleased. I had made a hypothesis reading the advertisement that this 7-Up wouldn't react with lithium to give a reddish colour or orangish, and it did. So I felt I'd done a good bit of science. Of course, we don't know what the colour is due to, and with a lot more experiments we could find out. But really, it's probably not worth it. There is perhaps a slightly macabre take-home message that if you really wanted to tell whether you're 7-Up was sugar-free, you could put lithium, metallic lithium into it, but that would first of all be dangerous and probably you wouldn't have the patience to wait for the colour to develop. So our recommendation is if you want to tell whether your 7-Up contains sugar, read the label. Brady was a bit critical of our lithium. It was a bit old. Why don't you buy new lithium? And the answer is that for this particular experiment, I felt even if the lithium had reacted with the air and the moisture in the air to make lithium hydroxide, it shouldn't make much difference. And the reactions you get are lithium with moisture in the air making lithium hydroxide. It could react with the air to make lithium oxide it could react with nitrogen to make lithium nitride. My point of view is, if the chemical is going to do what you want, why buy new stuff and have to pay a lot of money to dispose of the old stuff? Plus, you'd already blown our four pound budget on 7up. <laughs> I have not blown our budget because I paid for it myself. Brady usually doesn't let me do advertisements. He's given me 60 seconds to talk about the University of Nottingham, where I and Neil and some of the other people you see work. You probably realise that as a university we have several courses of chemistry, undergraduate, PhD, which are open to people from all over the world. And we have a new course just starting a master's course on AI and digital chemistry. AI is becoming really important and chemists who understand AI will be at an advantage compared to the others. So we have a new course starting in September 26 and down below you can see the link and my colleague Jonathan Hurst, who is leading the course, will be happy to answer any of your questions. So think about Nottingham. And have I had my 60 seconds? Oh, yeah, that's about it.